Good morning, good morning. Welcome to discipleship class. Come on in. Um, please ensure you have your Bibles and get ready to take some notes and grow in grace. I'm your host, John Hawkins, and I am excited to be here with you this morning. So let's pray, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Pray to the Father, we pray, pray to the Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this privilege, Father, that we get to be in your presence. Hello, good morning, Miss Mary. That we get to be in your presence. To good morning, good morning, Deacon Pierre. Good morning, those on Facebook. Good morning, uh, Arkea. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, Miss Smith. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. So we're going to go ahead and pray. We're going to go ahead and pray and get started. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, for this morning. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your amazing Holy Spirit. And thank you for this opportunity, Father, to come teach, encourage, and strengthen your church, Father. Equip me with your anointing that I may do good. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome, Nia. Welcome, Angelique. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, amazing people. Hello, Joy. Hey, Aaron Johnson. Good morning, soldier. Um, so what we're going to do is <laughs> we're going to pick up uh, what I didn't get to really get into um, yesterday, yesterday I, I really just, I was speaking, um, it, it really wasn't my notes yesterday. It's like the Holy Ghost just, just took over. We thank God for, for that. We thank God for that. So what I'm going to do today, we're going to pick up uh, where we left off uh, yesterday. And um, let's let's start off with our famous, with, our, with my favorite, one of my favorite scriptures, Colossians Three. I mean, after reading it yesterday, that scripture has become so amazing to me. Good morning. Good mo is this, uh, uh, I believe that's Dominique. Good morning, Dominique. Good morning, Miss Sabrina. Hello, uh, Pops and Mother. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Renee. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Let's, let's go ahead and turn our Bibles to Colossians um, 3 and verse Start, we're going to start at verse 3. Start at verse 3, chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 1. Hello, Tamia. Um, good morning, Tamia. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, good morning, Joy. Holy Ghost takeover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Holy Ghost takeover. Exactly. Holy Ghost takeover. Yes, sir. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. That's right. Absolutely. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. We appreciate you, Holy Ghost. All right. Let's go to Colossians. We could not do this without you, Holy Ghost. We thank you for everything. Okay. So, um, yesterday, we, we were talking about absolute surrender from the standpoint. Um, if you can hear me, just, you know, give me a thumbs up if everything is clear. Give me a thumbs up. If not, then the... good morning, Kim. Hello, Kim. Kim Smith. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hope you're doing good. We love you. Um, so we talked about absolute surrender. Now, nobody in their right mind who fell in love with Jesus doesn't want to be totally surrendered to him. I don't understand that. Like, I don't understand... Okay, perfect. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. I don't understand anybody in their right mind who will meet somebody like Jesus 
the love of your life and not want to be obedient to him. Right? Um, and, and not want to be obedient to him. Like, that, that doesn't make sense. Like, I mean, I, I would imagine that you all would agree that when you met Jesus, hello, uh, Tamika, Tamika Hart, that when you met Jesus, that was the best experience you ever had in your life. That was the best experience. I mean, that's what, that's what it was for me. So naturally, you wouldn't want to hurt somebody that has loved you the most. You wouldn't want to hurt somebody that you have benefited the most from. And so, but yet we discover that there are times where we actually do things to hurt him and we realize it and then it hurts us. It's like, well, I don't want to hurt you. You know, you've been too good to me. You haven't done anything wrong to me. I can be better. I can be better. I can be better. I can do better. I can obey better. I can follow better. I can be a better servant, right? I can be better. You know, think about it. Sometimes we, we don't always act like the best Christians. Especially not in the, in the presence of Jesus. Maybe we could come off as the best Christians in front of people. Because the people don't know our thoughts. People don't know our real moods. And how deep those moods be inside of us. People don't know that. People can't always read genuinely what's going on inside of us. Right? So they can never really fully get. They, they can never really fully understand us like, like God can. Because God can see our heart. He can see our thoughts. He can see everything. So we can offend God and God can clearly see that. And yet people can be around us and not even see the issues that we're dealing with in our heart, the issues that we're dealing with on our mind and so forth and so on. So um, when you meet Jesus, right, you, th there's a level of like, I want to please you at the same token we also discover that there's things about ourselves that are not pleasing to him. The thoughts that we think, the attitudes that we have, so forth and so on. So it's natural for you to want to rise up to the occasion and be obedient and be the servant that you know you can be, right? And what I'm saying is that you can be that servant, but you just gotta know how it's done. And the way it's done it's allowing Christ to be our life. That's how it's done. We have to understand that Jesus was actually sent for that very purpose. He, he was sent so that the hood can be taken out of me and that the Christ can be developed in me. That, that I, I'm not, I, I have not fully, I have not fully matured into all that Christ offers me. But I can look over my life and see the areas where I have developed into the image of Christ more and more and more. And I'm still growing into his image, right? I'm becoming more patient all because of Jesus Christ. Like even hearing me say that it touches my heart because I know I could not become the man that I am if it wasn't for Jesus. This is not cliche. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, like just sitting around Jesus, right? Just sitting around him. Like he, he talks to me at times. Like I told you a while ago when he told me, to be more sensitive to my wife. I didn't know I wasn't sensitive to her. How do you know how deep your sensitivity need to go? How do you really know if you're doing enough or you're not doing enough? You would have to be connected with him because outside of that, you're judging yourself by man's standards. You would have to be connected with him. So because he allows me to be connected with him and he, he, offers, he offers instructions to me, and just by being in his presence, you start you start to become more like him. Like, for example, you ask some questions like, Lord, what about these disciples that you gave me, these, these people that you put around me? You know, some people are not consistent. Some people are not this, this, and a third. And then it's like he replies and say, John, do you expect to have better disciples than what I had, per se? Think about the kind of disciples that I had. I'm like, oh, I didn't think about it like that. Yeah, you had some of the... The most challenging disciples on the planet. Yeah, you had some of the most challenging disciples on the planet. And then it's like, also, John, you one of my disciples. You ain't perfect either. Lord, you right. And then it's like, John, well, how do I deal with you? 
Do I yell at you? Do, do I always get angry at you? Lord, you actually don't. What does my Bible say, John? The goodness of God leads one to repentance. Man, do you hear what I, are y'all hearing what I'm telling you? So when you work, when you walk with God and all that's being revealed to you, something starts changing in you. You start seeing the people around you different. Then, not only then you start praying for them, you start believing God for them. Now it's not just about believing God for a car. Now it's not just about being, believing God for, for a, a, a house. Now you believe in God for transformation in the disciples that are around you. This is the kind of impact that Jesus Christ has on a person. And, 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 and what are you seeing? What do you notice about what I'm saying? What do you notice about what I'm saying? What you're going to notice is that this is exactly where he wants you to be. Because it's in this place where Christ becomes our life. Christ becomes our life. It's like when you amazing mothers on here, as you learn what I'm saying, your, your focus won't just be on materialistic things. No, I want you to have all the Gucci, all the Louis. I want you to have it all. But what is it that you gain all that and you don't even have righteous children? You never pray for your kids consistently. And they were vulnerable and subjected to the plans of the enemy. So, of course, I want you to have Louis. Get that Gucci, get that Louis. But that shouldn't be first. That shouldn't be your top priority. Right? That, that stuff should come because you are invested in the kingdom. The Bible says, first seek the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things. It shouldn't be first seek things and then I'll figure out how to live for Christ. It shouldn't be first seek things and then I'll allow Christ to be my life. And that's the, the place most Christians are operating in. They're going after stuff. They're going after stuff. And then because God is so good to them, then they'll allow Christ to come in a little bit. They'll start, you know, whatever the case may be. That's kind of their philosophy. But many of you who have children, you know how fast children grow. So if you don't start praying for them now, when will you ever start praying for them? And if you do start praying for them, why are you doing that? If any mom on this platform, if any mom on here on this platform really grabbed a hold of praying for their child, please talk to me. Why did you start doing that? That's because somewhere in your life, Christ convinced you. In your relationship, that's one of the things he has developed in your life. And what are you seeing that Christ is becoming your life? Because average parents are not praying. They're not praying nothing. They're yelling. They're screaming. Uh, They're they mad. They're angry because they don't have enough money to pay their bills. So all they're doing is yelling at the kids all day. They're taking their frustrations out on the children. And that's why the children can't wait to get 16, 17, 18. Come on, just like some of y'all. You couldn't wait to get out their house. You couldn't wait. But, but why was it like that, though? Because... Christ wasn't conformed in your father, in your mother, in your aunt, in your grandmother. That's why you, see, you thought you wanted to get out there because they got on your nerves. Guys, I'm trying to tell you, the only reason why they got on your nerves is because they was living in the flesh. They wasn't living in the spirit. They wasn't living in Christ. If they was living in Christ, they would have been quick to forgive. They would have been quick to love. Come on. This is, listen, you can't fake this. You can't, like I said, you, you know what I mean? You can't fake that this is real. I'm changing because Christ is changing me. I can feel the change. I can sense the patience. I can sense the, 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 the freedom from frustrations and angers. And I can, I can feel the maturity. And John, it's not my will for you to worry about anything. Just trust me. You right. You right, God. I feel you. I, I got you. I, I hear what you say. I trust you. I hear what you're saying. Trust you. I hear what you're saying, God. Trust you. Come on, church. So all, what am I saying? What, what am I saying? When you know Jesus for real, just like all of y'all on here know him. When you know him for real and you, you met him, not through your grandmother, not through your auntie, not through um, your, the evangelists in your family. Excuse me. But you know him for yourself. You were suicidal, he rescued you. You were lost, he found you. You were frustrated, he helped you. Whatever, he gave you direction, he did something. He met you right where you were. 
And as a result, you fell in love with him. But then you discover that you don't always do things right by him. It's just like many of the ladies. It's just like many of the ladies who are good women, but they end up dating bad men. And you do right by that man all the time. And that man knows that he shouldn't be treating you like that. But it's almost like he acts like he can't help himself. So in the same way, you a good woman, Christ is a good God. And we are that person in a relationship that have not always treated him properly. Right? And what I'm saying to you is that I know there's something in you that says, I can do better. How, how could we go on intentionally treating such a good God like he deserves our worst and yet we give the people give the devil their best no guys come on no maybe you never heard it like this before don't don't allow that to be your life where you get saying your best like like for example people will get a job and they'll do their best for money but then they'll come to church and just volunteer for one day and and, and just kind of loaf around show up late and, and, and things like that you'll give money your best but you'll, you'll give God your lease. It don't make no sense. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Are we together? So it shouldn't be that way. Right? Because you know he touched you. You know he helped you when you were, when you were depressed. When you were lonely. When you didn't know if you was going to make it another day. You see? The devil don't want you to be conscious of this. Because the day you become conscious of things like this. That's what change genuinely comes. Where you're not just doing it for your kids. You're not just doing it for this person. You're doing it for Christ. His love is strong enough to cause you to want to change your life. I'm just trying to tell you, I thought I was talking to somebody. I thought I was talking to somebody. My God. His love is that strong. Where you should be conscious that I don't want to disappoint you. I may have disappointed my mother. I may have disappointed my family. I may have disappointed my spouse. I may have disappointed my children. But I have found a love that has been greater than any love I've ever experienced. And I don't want to disappoint you. So those times when you disobey Christ, when he asks you to win a soul, or he tells you to serve in church, or he tells you to check your attitude, or he tells you to go to a person to ask him to forgive you, does that not disappoint you when you disobey him? Do you not feel a godly sorrow when you disappoint him? Now, my question is, what do you do about it? Do you just kind of just for, try to forget about it until you become numb and callous to the reality where you can't even hear him no more? Is that your disposition? Or do you do what your pastor does by the grace of God and learning to do and working on doing? Do you come to him and say, Father, Open the eyes of my understanding. Father, help me to surrender to you. Help, help me to become a better child. I know you understand everything, Father. Because one thing I learned about God, and I heard this from Dr. Ronnie Hart Brown many years ago, and I didn't understand him before, but now I understand more now than ever before. He said, oftentimes God will not help you unless you come and you ask him for his help. I'm thinking he's God. If God knows you need help, surely he'll come and help you. But then it dawned on me. God can't help the prideful. Because a prideful, in order to help, try to help a prideful person, you got to be prideful yourself. Only prideful people can try to help prideful people. What do I mean by that? Because a prideful person, a person who's prideful, they're not going to listen. Prideful people don't listen. So in order for somebody to help a prideful person who's a prideful person who don't want to change, they have to be prideful themselves. But a humble person will know, I can't help a prideful person. So in other, in other words, a, a humble person knows, if I'm going to help you, you got to humble yourself. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then, only then, will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Like I've had, I've had people in my family. That I won't even deal with them. I won't until they humble themselves. I won't even deal with them until they humble. I'm not saying nothing to you. I'm not dealing with you until you humble yourself. I can't talk. You can't talk to a prideful person. 
So even, you know, you, you can't really deal with a prideful person. Now, it's one thing if you don't know you prideful. It's one thing that if you don't really fully know that pride is going to be like, and then, yeah, somebody can come and say, hey, man, you prideful. And he's like, oh, my God, I didn't know that. Please forgive me. Help me. Teach me. Show me. So God won't even come to you and speak to you and help you sometimes if you don't ask him for that help. And asking him for help shows your humility and it, because God is a gentle God. He's not going to force his way into your life. He's not going to force his way into your life. And that's when I had a game changer. That's what took my prayer life to the next level. God, I need you. God, I want you. God, I thank you. God, I can't do nothing good without you. You said you anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good. You anointed him to do good. Lord, I need your help. Anoint me to do good. What, what am I saying, church? At the end of the day, whenever you come to that conclusion, you're going to run head on with the reality that Christ needs to become your life. You're going to run on with a head on collision that Christ, our, our biggest difficulties and challenges in life, it, it comes because in the areas where we don't know Christ is our life. We, we, we live in so troublesome in the area of our mind because we don't allow Christ to become our life. Do we think like Christ? The Bible says, I believe it's in Philippians. It says, let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. So that means if you don't let it, wow. If you don't let it, then Christ is not your life. If you don't let it, well, pastor, how am I not letting it? When you're worried, when you're worried about your money, when you're worried about, and guess what? All of us can get tempted at that. I, I didn't say temptation is not worry. Temptation is not worry. You can be tempted to worry about money and not worry about it. I hope y'all follow me, please. Are you following, Pastor Nathan? You can be tempted. So don't confuse temptation with actual disobedience. Don't confuse temptation. Sometimes temptation can actually feel like you actually practicing disobedience. Like, you, you can be tempted to worry. And sometimes it may actually feel like you're worrying. So what I'm telling you is that Christ never worries. Christ don't worry. And that's why he says, he says, let this mind be in you. So my question to you, is Christ your life in the area of your mind? Are you a worrying person? And I know many of you worry because sometimes you can't help but to worry because you watch a, a worrying world. This world is full of worry. All of your TV shows are full of worry. All of your, the music you listen to is full of worry. Some, some girl on there complaining about some relationship or some boy whining about some girl he want. It's just rooted in worry. And then God bless our mother's hearts out here. All of our mothers, beautiful people. They some of the most beautiful people on the planet. I'm going to tell you right now. But sometimes mamas, y'all live a philosophy that is not biblical. And I'm not, I'm not rebuking you. I'm just teaching you. And that don't even make you a bad person. You actually some of the most awesomest people on the planet. So don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Mamas are some of the most beautiful, awesomest people on the planet. I'm trying to tell you. I'm, 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 I'm emphasizing this right now because I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not rebuking mamas like I rebuke some of these other people. Because they are, most of mamas are really genuine. They really try to do their best. But mamas, I got to help you with something. All this thing you talking about, you had me worried. And when you saying it for you, from your I get your perspective. I definitely get you. You're not really trying to say nothing bad. You just trying to show compassion. You trying to make the people understand how much you really love them. You had me worried. And you hoping, you're hoping that if they can hear how much you worry, maybe they'll want to change. Maybe they wouldn't hang around those same people no more. Maybe they wouldn't go. Uh, to some of the places they used to go. Maybe they they won't allow themselves to get arrested. I think I'm preaching too hard. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm preaching a little too hard, Pastor Nietzsche. You know what I mean? I often think that to myself. Maybe I need, I'm preaching too hard. Maybe I need to slow down. Because I can be going and, and, and going. I don't even know if, if they connecting out there. Y'all want me to slow down a little bit? You see, 
So think about that. Y'all, y'all, y'all have met plenty of mamas. Maybe some of y'all said, maybe some of y'all get a little older and y'all becoming that mama. You had me worried. You had me worried. And what I'm trying to tell you guys is that that's not the mind of Christ. That's not the mind of Christ. Christ ain't, you ain't gonna ever hear Christ saying, you had me worried in order to help you to see his compassion and his love for you. You had me worried. He don't use that as a way to get you to change, to repent, to change your ways. You had me worried. I'm trying to tell you, Christ must become our life. That means you literally stop living life the way you would live it and you live life the way he wants you to live it without losing the things that makes life fun. It's just that you have fun with him, him in mind. You're not having fun swinging on some pole. You know what I mean? Like you don't define fun based on the lifestyle you used to live. You rediscover fun in a clean way. Instead of hanging on a pole, you jumping on a bed in a luxurious hotel with your family. You, 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 um, what's that thing that you and Clover did, Pastor, when we went to the beach? Parasailing. Yeah, you parasailing. You swimming out in the middle of an ocean that looks like Kool-Aid, like, like uh, blue Kool-Aid water. That's your fun. You going, you going to four, five-star restaurants. It's a new level of fun in Christ. You, you don't, like a lot of that stuff that you call fun was trashy. It was having fun with a budget. That's why I was so risque. Because you ain't had no money. So you had to find crazy, random, out of this world things to do. That's having fun with a budget. See, you wouldn't think my kind of fun wasn't fun if you had money. Oh, they catching that. If you had money, what you think? What you think? It wouldn't be fun to fly and the jet would close on your butt? You wearing a full Louis, Louis Vuitton outfit? That wouldn't be fun to show up in Venice with some uh, Ann, uh what's it? Uh, not Ann Teller, but uh, 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 Saint Laurent or whatever. Eve Saint Laurent. Saint Laurent? Mm -hmm. That that wouldn't be fun to you. Stop playing. So then, the only reason why you consider that stuff, I'm sorry to put it like this, but that kind of horse lifestyle fun because it's cheap. You can go get it for cheap. It don't cost you that much. You see, so don't don't act like don't see. So so that's why I be trying to tell people. That's why I be trying to get people to think. Now I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna veer off a little bit, but hopefully I can get back. It's the same reason why people don't want to have kids. People think they people think they don't want to have kids because they got a choice. You you're not choosing. Society has propagated you to think that way to reduce population. And on top of that, they help convince you even further the fact that you don't have money to take care of the kids you got. But if the, if the tables were turned and you were rich, you would actually, it would actually be defined as you having a choice to choose whether you want to have 10 children or two children. Because now your financial status won't influence your decision. So what I'm trying to tell you, a lot of times you think you're making a decision, but you're not making a decision. It's, your, it's the state of your life. It's the condition that you're in. It's the lack of money that's making a decision for you. Because even if you did decide to to want to wanna go fly to Venice in a jet, if you ain't got the money, you could choose all you want to. Yeah. It ain't happening. So what do people do? Instead of getting faith for it and, and growing and working hard and, and putting in the work today where it seems like ain't nothing happening for you. But yet you still put in the work by faith and eventually seeing it come to pass. Instead of people doing that, they just settle. They settle and, and they settle for cheap. And that's where the whole cheap lifestyle comes from. That's where this whole cheap lifestyle comes from. It don't cause nobody to go out here and wear them little cheap old spanks. Now, obviously, you know, you know, whatever. <laughs> but that ain't really what I'm talking about. That's the only thing I can really think of that I know of. Because I don't know nothing about that cheap stuff. Come on, besides, you know, whatever. <laughs> Glory to God. I don't know if they hear me no more, Pastor Israel. So that's why, man, I'm not, I'm not controlled by society. I'm not letting society dictate to me, have two kids, because that's all you can afford. So you mean to tell me I'm going to be on the same financial level that I'm on 
uh, that I was on ten day like like ten years ago that I'm on. No, I'm already not on the same financial level. I can show y'all some figures that'll blow your mind away, major figures. But the thing is, you be like, hey, Pastor, you got access to those kind of funds. Well, why don't you just use that to go to Mexico? Because I didn't get into that this whole financial thing. Just to, I didn't get into it to just to splurge. I got into it to buy God a house. And so I can't just dabble into investments too soon. I don't love money like everybody else. If people had access to something somebody had access to, they'll be spending money all around them. They'll be they'll 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 cheapen their, their assets. I mean, think about it. If somebody if somebody turned uh something over to you right now, a house, and a house was worth fifty thousand dollars. I'm not I'm not telling you it'd be wrong for you to sell it. I'm just making a point here. Right? Because I'm I'm not trying to get all into my business. But like if you had the house is worth twenty five thousand, you know what you're gonna do? The first thing you're gonna do is sell that joint. You gonna sell that joint and then go spend twenty thousand on a car? I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't do that. To me, that's that's stupid. That's stupid because I would take that same twenty five and I would go invest it, and I would think about my future and not my present. And that's the difference between me and other people. <clears throat> If I wanted to right now, I could go get money and I could go buy Louis Vuitton, all that. For what? To please who? I'm not trying to please y'all. I'm trying to please my father. My father is not moved by me walk, walking around here in Louis Vuitton. One day, yes, fine. Yes, one day that'll be cool. But for right now, that's not the mission. The mission is to buy property. The mission is to build God a house. The mission is to not just go do one crusade. Do you know how much they want to? They 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 they, they want to. They talking about charging for the crusade in Mexico, three hundred thousand dollars. So, how can I think like some Christians? How if, if they they want three hundred grand for one? And guess what? That was like the that was like the bare minimum. That's like literally going from doing a crusade from three days to doing it for one day. Renting out the facility, I think. For one day was $150,000 if we go with that facility. $150,000. Do you know how much they're charging us for the engineer? Just for the person who runs the sound. $65,000 for the person who click buttons. Sixty five. Come on, guys. Talk to me. See, you ain't in my shoes. So, you know what I mean? Unless you're in my shoes, you wouldn't understand why. How can you have access to this amount of money and yet you, you don't use it because... Because I didn't get into it. That, that's that, respectfully. That's pennies to me. What you might think is a lot of money. I'm telling you, what you think is a lot of money is pennies to me compared to the price purchase on the division that we got to fulfill. This ain't a matter of you, you, you might fulfill it and God will understand if you let. Let me see God understand if Noah didn't build that ark. Let me see if God didn't understand if Moses didn't go and lead two million some people out of out of bondage. No, I got to get this done. So that's why I there's times I was up three o'clock in the morning praying to the Holy Ghost, praying to God, Lord, give me what, what do I need to do? And he told me what to do and I did it. And I'm starting to see the benefits of it. But it's not, I, but I didn't get in it for me. I got in it for the kingdom. Because one thing I understood, okay, John, you moving in power. People, people are coming out of wheelchairs. There's times where, and many of you were there. There's times when all heaven poured out in the service. There's times when it felt like Jesus walked right down the middle of the aisle in the church and so many other miraculous people, tumors, people, tumors coming out of people with breast cam. You was there when it happened. The woman got shot five times. I mean, come on. It goes on and on and on and on about the things we don't see in the living world of church. But at the same token, we didn't have the money to get out of that small building. The church was growing, packed out of the pack from one end to the next. You couldn't even you couldn't even walk down to the altar. Without people having to pick up chairs. Y'all was there. So yeah, we, we we doing it. But at the same token, we couldn't even afford to get a bigger building. Well, that's changing. That's changing. See, I'm not on this stuff like everybody. I'm not on. My focus is not clothing. I can go buy Louis Vuitton if I wanted to. That's not my focus. I, I can go buy a car if I want to. But I already got a car. Why do I need to go buy a car if I got a car? But the kind of things... The kind, the kind of things that I'm, that I, that I want to buy, the price tag is much bigger than a thousand dollar shoe from Louis Vuitton. These are not thousand. These are 
just for just for one of the, a piece of land that I like, one of them. I'm not saying that that's the land that God has chosen for us, but I'm just saying just the one that I looked at and I like. Because I mean, when you when you looking up real estate and all that, you gonna see a lot of stuff. Well, one of the piece of land was thirty million dollars just for land, just for land, just for, with nothing on that thing. Bare land, thirty million dollars, right? Right? You know? Come on. I, I thought I was talking to somebody. So I'm not irresponsible, guys. I'm not just sitting around working a job every day for the rest of my life. Hoping and wishing that things will get better. No, I'm praying. I'm fasting. I'm seeking God. And the Lord is talking to me. Tell me what to do. Now, it may not happen as fast as I want it to happen. But I can definitely see things that that that, that he told me to do. I can see things change, moving in the direction. It's just my heart is different. I'm not I don't love this world. I, I don't love I don't love the things of this world. There's some things in this world I think. You know, natural things like clothing, I think are, are, are awesome, but I don't love it. Not to the not to the extent that I'm willing to put your future and your kids' future, um, sacrifice your kids' future for the sake of me stunting around y'all. No. So the, the areas of my life, man, I, I, I think I just kind of went on. I just kind of lost it a little bit right there. But, the, but what am I trying to tell you? These areas in my life that I'm telling you about, these are the areas in my life that I've become more like Christ. Christ, our life. And just like my wife would tell you, you can have it all. You can have it all. Right? But you should not be having all this stuff, Louis Vuitton first, without first, seek, first seeking the kingdom. That's backwards. That, that's not even biblical. That's not even biblical. You can have it all and you will have it all. But Christ needs to be your life first. I don't know if I'm talking to anybody no more, Pastor. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if, I, if I'm communicating at this point. Huh? Okay. Because I, I don't know. Because Santi, she didn't even say nothing to me. Santi? Santi just said, yes, sir. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Santi probably cracking up right now. Um, yeah, Aaron Johnson, I'm really receiving this, sir. Yeah, we loaded on YouTube and we loaded on, on Facebook. Okay, let me see what Kim said. Maybe Kim going to tell me something. I thank God that you are, dang, that thing went by that fast. Hold up, I got to find, Kim, I got to, hold up. I got to see what Kim said. I think Kim may be saying something. Let me see. I got to find it. Okay, there we go. It says, I thank God that you are a pastor that is on accountability and priority for God. It's a lot of pastors that don't lead by example, sir. I thank and praise God for my pastors. I love you both so much. We love you too, Kim. I knew Kim was going to come through and say something nice like that. Come on. You are talking to me, Tamika Hawk. Do you know, while I was getting ready for this, to, this right now, I was getting ready for this. You know, you you cannot even go on. You cannot even come on. I got a laptop right here. So when y'all see me looking over stuff, I'm looking at the laptop so I can catch some of the things you say. I'm with you, pastors. Okay. I think that's Deacon Pierre right there. That's awesome. Do you know when you go on your laptop, the first thing you see is all the news articles, right? It's all. Do you know the, one of the things that's on the, the front page of the news article? A pastor was found guilty of... Of, of stealing all the church savings. Jesus. You know the pastor who was who was buying all that Gucci and Louis Vuitton and, and they ran up in the, they ran up in his church in New York. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. It was on the news. Okay. They ran up in his church in New York right, right, and they robbed him for his chain, right, diamonds, and all of that. Right, right, right. They robbed him and he was like cool with Fat Joe, like all the rappers yeah, in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was this big thing in New York where the pastor he was like, and he said he got all this stuff through real estate. Right, right. Well, it just had an article that said he was just found guilty of taking like $90,000. He was spending all that money on his stuff. Now you, now you see what I'm saying. You don't see me coming to the church. Again, I'm not I'm not against Louis Vuitton. It, just, it needs to be your time for that. When it's your time, when you can do it properly. When you can do Louis Vuitton without taking money from the church. 
You know, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mad at the brother or nothing like that. I'm just making a point here. Your priority. See, people think, people think there is no, no growth process to this. They think there's no faith and patience process with this. How can you reap a harvest if you never first plant a seed? You got to plant the seed before you can reap the harvest. Everybody want to reap a harvest without planting the seed. Everybody want to be mature without growing. Everybody want to be smart without studying wisdom. There's a growth element to this. And I believe sometimes, even if y'all, y'all that watch it, if you're not careful, you're going to end up spending your future in the present. Oh, they didn't hear that. He called the bling bling pass. Yeah. And again, I'm not against bling bling. But you got to get bling bling on your own expense. You cannot be going into the, the ministry account. Can't nobody in here to charge Pastor John Hawkins for going to the ministry account buying diamond rings and diamond chains. You don't even see me wearing that stuff. The suits that y'all see me wearing, somebody, somebody else from another church, from another place bought this stuff for me. For the most part, if I don't even remember them. I don't even, I, you know, there are people, people from Florida calling me on the phone. I want to send you, give you six hundred dollars to go buy you a, a tailor-made suit. And I say, you know what? I appreciate that. Just send me the money. I'm gonna use that for something else. Maybe handle some ministry stuff or or whatever the case may be. Huh? There's a, you know, there's a time when I when I start putting it on, you gonna know. I don't even know. I'm, I don't even know if I'm gonna go that route, but. But if, if you see me putting it on, but that ain't my heart, guys. And I'm not knocking it. I think it's a beautiful thing. And I want the children of God to be able to go buy whatever clothes you want. But what good is that, guys, if you're not fulfilling your purpose? I mean, again, I'm not saying you can't have both. But at least I want, I want to get it in your mindset, the part that you don't often pay attention to. I want you to get that part in your mind because I think we've gone so far. We even think the other side exists anymore. We just think that we think it's automatic fulfilling God's purpose. We think it's automatic. It's just, it's just going to happen. But we don't think it's automatic when it comes to the things we want in life. That you got to have the same mentality, the same drive that you have about nice things. You gotta, you're supposed to have that in Christ. And then those other things will come without you Sacrificing Jesus on the altar all over again. That's what I'm saying. If my priorities is different. My priorities. If somebody, if some of y'all was in a position that I'm in right now, financially, you would be taking all that money, just like my wife. Like you know what I mean? Uh, uh, what do you mean? I mean you you different because because you we, we hold each other accountable. We hold each other accountable. No, you ain't, you gotta let me finish. I'm not saying it in a, in a negative light. Thank God that we here with for each other, because you'll be just you know what I mean. What you'll be you'll be you'll be you'll be taking like you'll get go get ten thousand. <laughs> By now you would you would definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, but I'm not saying it in a bad way. It's not like a, I would probably have a different account from that, and let that be the spending account, and then let that be the ministry, or what you know. Come on, guys. Focus of the kingdom. I'm, but I'm not saying it in a bad way. I'm not saying because you, you're an amazing, you're an amazing person. I'm just saying we hold each other accountable. That's what I'm trying to say. Come on, somebody. Our priorities are different. I can go and splurge. I can go do this. But again, what is what is ten thousand dollars going to do? And I'm, it's actually that's I'm not even really giving y'all the, the real deal, Holyfield. But what is that going to do for me? I give away ten thousand dollars as for offerings. Like, like some people in the church give their little $5 bills. Some of y'all give it $5 bills, and it's an insult to God. But you will go out there and spend two, three hundred dollars at, 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 at the mall or, or at some clothing store. That's what I'm saying. Your priority's not right. But then you will look at me like I'm crazy because I sent ten thousand here, ten thousand there, ten thousand over here, ten thousand, another ten thousand. You say, man, what are you doing? Why are you sending that kind of money? Because my priorities are different. I'm thinking about the kingdom. I'm not thinking about stunting in front of y'all. We already, I did that when I was in Lincoln Heights. <laughs> stunner, number one stunner. A number one stunner. You ain't seen no stunning. Come on. I already done been there and done that. Some, some, people, some of y'all are still trying to live out stuff that you never got to live out in high school. Stop it. Stop it and make Christ a priority. Make Christ a priority.
Christ our life. Christ our life. Guys, I'm trying to tell you. See, it's hard for you to understand the possibility of not worrying if you don't learn what I'm teaching you. It will seem impossible. This is the right Thank you so much, sweetie. Thank you all. It, it, It'll be practically impossible for you to think a life of not worrying if you don't learn to allow to make Christ your life. If all you're thinking about is first seeking clothes, first seeking food, first seeking shoes, people get more pissed off about. Come on, somebody. Is that a bad word? Or is that, should I say peed off? I didn't know. I, I hear pastors saying that all the time, especially my white pastors. I didn't know. I always thought I always thought it was a bad word until I got around these white the white pastors. But he's from South Africa. No, I'm talking about other pastors. I'm talking about a lot of white pastors. They say that. I, so I always thought it was bad. I grew up thinking it was bad. When I heard them say it behind the pulpit, I, I, okay, maybe piss is not a bad word. But anyway, I'll just say pee. Come on, what was I saying? Help me get back to what I was saying. Come on, help me get back. What was I saying? Stunning, uh, oh, y'all gotta help me. Come on, somebody help me get back to what I was saying. Some of these pastors would be Oh, I thought I was talking right there. Oh, I thought I was saying something. I forgot. I forgot what I was, what I was saying right there. Somebody help me out there. Cause we almost there. Cause I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking. We talking this morning. Is it, the money I it says this brother Jace. I'm here, Pastor. I thank you for praying over my wife. God healed her in two weeks. Cancer from the church. That's that's awesome. That's that's awesome. Please, no more cancer. Amen. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Subscribe to the YouTube channel out there. Do me that favor. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's kind of just pick it up from there. Uh, material things before, before destiny. You know what I mean? Like, like I was saying is that, you know, you might come to church on a Sunday and tip God $5. I don't know. I don't pay attention to what you get. But you might tip God $5 and then go right out. And drop $30 at, at Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I believe you can have both. So I don't want you walking away from here thinking I want y'all to be monks. I don't want y'all thinking walking away from here thinking I want y'all to go to the thrift store and buy your clothes. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just simply saying that Christ, my, my God, Christ. He needs to become our clothing first. The Bible says clothe yourself with humility. Christ our life. I'm talking about priority. Even Jesus says first seek the kingdom. First seek the kingdom. That's what I'm trying to get you on. And that's what's happening to me. When I was in Florida, I, I left everything to follow the call of God. And guess what happened? I ended up with Range Rovers. I ended up with, with all kind of stuff. All those things follow me. And when I moved back here to, to continue to follow the call of God, to come to D.C., I gave all that stuff up. I gave it all up. I gave it all. I get most of that stuff. I gave it all away. All my thousands of dollars worth of suits, my five thousand dollar watch, my uh, Breitling watch, all of my Jordans, four hundred dollars, uh, four hundred dollar Jordans. 200, 190, I mean all that I gave all that stuff away Because I said God I'm going to trust you again We're going to do it again I laid it all down I laid it all down To show God This is not my priority You are my priority I want you, I love you I want to, And that's where I'm at now I could be like other people And go out here and buy you know, watches and spend my money on clothes and all that kind of thing. No. You know what I do with my money? I invest it. I invest it for bigger returns. To 100x it. 100x. 1,000x. I want to spend money when I can't spend it all. I, uh, I, don't, I don't even know what they heard. I don't even know if y'all even heard what I just said. 
I want to spend that kind of money that you can't spend it on. No matter what you buy. I want that kind of money that you can't spend it on no matter what you buy. That even if you can live off the interest of that money. That just the interest on that money makes you wealthy. I heard somebody say that you can actually uh, go get a Rolls Royce for free if you're rich. Where you could go and obviously you could go take out a loan. Um, like you could have millions of dollars in the bank. Millions and millions and millions of dollars. And you can go to the bank and say, hey, I want to take out a loan for, for Rolls Royce. The loan on my money. And then you go get the Rolls Royce. And the whole time you ain't even paying for the car out your own millions. You paying for the car out your interest. It's the interest that you're going to get for that whole year. Which is like $500,000. They end up paying for the Rolls Royce. You didn't even pay for it. I want that kind of money that you can't even touch the bottom of it. You can't even touch the bottom of it. But see, a lot of y'all ain't thinking about that. You're spending your future for the expense of showing off today. You're trying to show off to everybody. You're trying to show off to everybody, I'm telling you. If God didn't didn't give me that, that Benz, I wouldn't have went out here and just, just dropped any kind of money. No. And then be broke for the rest of my life? Anyway, I'm just trying to tell you, listen. I'm using a natural analogies. Y'all caught these natural analogies. But really what I'm talking about is you in Christ. Putting on Christ. Don't sit here and allow the world to run all your energy out and you ain't got no energy for Jesus. Don't be around bad company that destroy good morals and they using all your energy and you cannot use your energy for Christ. You can't, when you come to church, you tired because you, you spend out all your energy on your friendships on a Saturday. You can't, you can't sow big seeds in the house of God towards missions, towards the work of God because you don't spend all your money on all this debt that you accumulated. All this debt you accumulated. So that means when you die, all your money is going to be rotten on the earth. Do you, have you ever seen an old car, a decrepit car, that one day that car, one day before that car was a luxurious car, but now it's just some car sitting in a parking lot and it's all, it's all um, rusty, lights missing, nobody wants, it's just abandoned. That's what's going to happen to all this stuff you buy, those houses, those cars. So that means everything you put, you spending your money on, when you die and go to heaven, everything that shows that you, you lived here before will all be rotten sitting in some garage somewhere. It'll be a house that you uh, did a 40-year mortgage on that you probably never paid off and you die and they end up demolitioning it and building new structures. Like nothing that you ever done will either, it will show for anything. Because your priorities were wrong. Your priorities need to be the kingdom. I'm telling you, you need to be willing to sacrifice today in order to really enjoy it tomorrow. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Can I just be living? I'm telling you, y'all. That's why your pastor is on here. We on here every morning because we're not living for today. We're not. We living for the future. We living for what tomorrow brings. We living for what... What, what, what eternity brings. We live it for how we want to raise our children. We don't want to raise our children as broke pastors. So we labor. We work hard. We, you know, I only slept for, what? I only slept for like three hours so far. I went, I went to sleep at three o'clock, at, at three something this morning and got up an hour and 15 minutes or so later to do prayer. And then I went to sleep for two hours or so and then got right back up to do this. Why am I doing all of this? Because I'm not living for the day. If I was living for the day, I'd be asleep for eight, nine hours, ten hours. If I if I if, if I was um, living for the day, I would stay at a, I would stay at a workplace. I would stay working a nine to five for the rest of my life. See that that's that that many times that's what people that complacent. But how are you going how are you gonna give the, the the future a future to your children that they deserve? Working a nine to five for the rest of your life. How? 
Nine to five barely even allow you to take care of your expenses, let alone somebody else's. And you got to raise your, your children. You got to still raise them when they're adults. And I'm talking about when they're 17. A 17 year old these days are adults. They eat like adults. They got phones. They run electric bills up. They run a water bill up. So you won't, before you can, I'm not telling you to kick them out, but I'm just, before you can put them out, they still gonna be, you still raising adults. You gotta start thinking differently. See, the world got you in a trick bag. The world got you in a trick bag right now. They got you, they got you taking out loans for everything. Debt out of your mind, debt out of your head. And, not, and you can't even think about the future. You can't even think about the kingdom because you got so much debt in your life. You can't even sow like you're supposed to. You can't even invest. You, you can't even have time to study your Bible to see that it may seem like you lack it right now. You sowing, you investing. But the harvest that's over your life is going to be tremendous. I don't even got enough time to talk about all this. Don't sell out your future for your stunted present. Don't sell out your future for your stunting present. And many of us, think about how many hundreds of thousands of dollars we done squandered. All because we was trying to impress somebody. How many outfits you went to go buy because you was trying to impress somebody. And these people are not even in your life no more. You was going to some cookout, some all white party. And those people not even around no more. <laughs> they not even around no more. Where's all that money? Where's all of that Jordan money you was... You was trying to impress, going to the cookout, trying to show off to everybody. Where they at now? But I tell you who's still there. Jesus is still there. He's still there. Where's his offerings? Where's, where's his faithful tithings? Where's the souls? Where's the disciples? Where's the people that you reach for Christ? When was the last time you brought somebody in the house of God? When the last time you told somebody about Jesus and prayed for them to receive Christ? Priority. But I, can, but I guarantee you can find it the last time you told somebody this outfit you want, this car you believe in God for, priorities are wrong. See, when you put on Christ, Christ our life. Christ our life. Christ was not focused on these things. Christ wasn't focused. But guess what? When, when you sold out like Christ, these things going to find their way to you. These things, look at how that, that being's found its way to me. Look at how I live. I live in, I live in luxury. Things going to find their way to you. Things will find their way to you. People come and they give me money. And what do I do with the money? Hold up. I need to get my charger. My laptop going out. One second. Talk to me. People come and give me money. And what do I do with it? People give me money directly. They say, this is for you. I give away 90% of it. You say, man, that's crazy. No, no, I, I, I don't want the kind of life that you're looking for. I don't want that kind of life. I want the kind of life that Christ can give me. I don't want the kind of life that, because the, the kind of life that Christians are living, I've already lived it. I did it. I did it in Lincoln Heights. I've already lived that life. I want the kind of life that only Christ can offer. You're talking about wealth. I want that Solomon's wealth. I don't want that. This society kind of wealth, that paycheck to paycheck. We've been living that most of our life. I want that Solomon kind of wealth. I, I don't want that modern day Christian kind of obedience. One foot in, one foot. I want that Christ obedience, that total surrender. I don't want to make excuses because, oh, I'm from the hood. I didn't have pastors as my parents. I don't want that excuse. I want that Christ kind of obedience. I want that kind of obedience that don't worry. I want that kind of obedience that may not have a lot of money on him, but he had he was able to, and even if Christ did have money on him, it wasn't nowhere to buy no food for everybody. So what did he do? He, he was so connected to his father, he could say, Father, I thank you. 
And all of a sudden able to multiply the loaves, the bread and the fish. That's the kind of relationship I want. That's the kind of obedience I want. And I wish there's some people on here that want that kind of relationship with Christ. Christ, our life. Christ, our life. And if you want that kind of life, you have to start taking little steps of obedience. You have to start where you are. Ask yourself simple questions. Right? That, that if you ask, ask somebody who devoted their life to Christ, they'll look at you and laugh. If you was to ask them, are you faithful with your tithes? What? Of course I'm faithful with my tithes. Are you faithful with your tithes? I'm just going to go down the line. Just little different things that I want to just bring to your attention to help you evaluate yourself. Because if you say that, um, if you say, you, you, if we all say we want that Christ life, then let's evaluate it then. Are you, are you a committed tither? Is it too difficult for you to give 10% Every time money come in your Well then you don't want that life You're not about that life you, You're not ten toes in Be about that life We're about that life You faithful with your times Do you have Do you serve in your church When Christ is in you These are natural things Do you have a desire To, to share your faith with other people Guys, these are indicators that Christ... I'm not getting on nobody. I'm not calling nobody out. I'm just letting you know these are indicators. The fact that I can move my arms and I can turn my... It shows my heart is working. My heart is pumping. I can move my arms. I can do this. My heart is pumping. So when, I'm, when I have a desire to reach souls, when, I have a, when I'm faithful with my ties, when, when I walk in love, that shows that, that Christ is my life. These are indicators that Christ is my life. When Christ is your life, you're going to want to be saved. You're going to want to get involved. Be, get involved. You're going to want to become a member of a church. You, you're going to want to be water baptized. You're not going to be putting stuff off. Putting stuff off. You're going to want these things. Christ, our life. You're going to want to live a life where you're free from worry. That even though worry comes against you, you say, no, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to worry. But I'm going to focus on you, God. I'm going to focus my attention on you. Christ, our life. Guys, I can go on and on and on. But at some point, I got to put a stop to this. And I think right now is a good time to put a stop to this. Miss Mary said, you always reach out to help others. That's right. But it's the Christ in me. I praise you, Jesus. I give you praise, sir. It's only because of you. I thank you for every good thing that comes from you, Jesus. You're my Lord. You have made me to have one of the greatest marriages on the planet, Lord. Any good thing in my life comes from you and I give you praise. So this is why we going to Mexico. It's because Christ is in my heart. Christ is in my heart. I don't understand everything about Mexico. My, I don't have all this figured out with Mexico. But I'm, I'm going because I love, because he's in my heart. Evidently, Christ has love for Mexico. And he's looking for somebody that will obey him and go. So even though I don't understand everything, I'm going to be on an airplane. And many of you should have been jumping out your seat. Pastor, I'll go with you. But guess what? You worried about your bills. You worried about your family. You worried about your children. You worried about everything. You worried about everything. You should not be like that. You should be free. You should be, you should be free to obey. And I'm, and I'm, not, I'm not saying God even called everybody to go there. But if I were to say, let's everybody, let's go get some hog and dogs, you, you wouldn't have had to pray about that. You wouldn't have to say, well, Pastor, let me, let me just pray. Let me ask God to see if this is okay. You wouldn't have prayed about that. You'd be like, man, yeah, yeah, give me some vanilla, give me some strawberry, give me some cookies and cream. Come on. People's priorities are not straight. 
People say, all right, see, if, if Christ was burning in your heart, even if he didn't call you to go over there, you'd have been jumping out your chair. That's me. I want to go. I want the experience. I would love to go over there and see my beautiful Mexican brothers and sisters. I would love to go see new cultures. Why is that not burning in you? Why is that not burning in you? Because you got bills to pay? I'm just trying to tell you. I'm just trying to tell you guys. But I got to stop because I because I, I said a lot. So hopefully, maybe if you could have taken some notes, maybe you can go back and watch this again because, again, the Holy Ghost took over. So I didn't even, I didn't even go into my notes again today. Um, but those that are on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Please do me a favor and, and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we already at 484, so people are subscribing. Um, those on on Facebook, please do me a favor and share, share, because somebody else need to hear this word. Somebody else need to hear this word. And African American people, don't be cheap. Don't be cheap, African American people. Don't be cheap Christians. Well, we got all these cliches. All these cliches, but no actions to back it up. Let your actions speak louder than your words. Instead of all these cliches, ask yourself, do you pay all your tithes? Instead of all these cliches, ask yourself, do you have a passion for souls? Instead of all these cliches, ask yourself. Do you forgive everybody? I mean, everybody, even people from your past. Do you forgive everybody? Instead of these cliches, are you known as a person of love? Do you walk in love every single day? Because if you don't practice these things that I'm saying right now, all these cliches are vain. They are futile. And Jesus will say, you worship me with your mouth, but your heart is far from me. And I know many of you that are watching, you want absolute surrender. You want to obey God. You want to do everything he wants you to do. I want to encourage you. Get hungry for God. Get more hungry for God. Get more serious about the calling on your life. Take things much more seriously. Show God your integrity. Be faithful. Learn to be faithful in these little areas of obedience. Whatever you do for God, do it. With rejoice. Be intentional. Stop waiting around for God to manage your money for you. Stop waiting around for God to do everything for you. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. You got to do it. God ain't going to go to Mexico for me. God ain't going to come and pass that church for me. <clears throat> you have to do it. So what are you waiting for? Why are you waiting for money to give your tithes? Why are you waiting for God knows what in order to come out soul winning? I'm just saying. Christ our life. Christ our life. Wow. They done with me on Facebook. Look. They done with me on Facebook. They done. So, okay. Well, since y'all done, then we're going to go ahead and just glory to God. Hey, Lula. Always good to have you on here, Lula. Always great to have you on here, Lula. Glory to God. Okay, we I love you too, uh, uh, LOL Mo. Love you too, LOL Mo. Love you all as well. I'm glad your wife received her healing. Praise to Jesus Christ. Thank you for this eye opener, sir. I'm changing my ways. Yes, sir. Thank you for this wisdom. And, and if, if, if any of y'all are genuine about changing your ways, then either A, you took notes today, or B, you go back and you get the notes out of here. Without that, you're just going to repeat the same patterns. It ain't nowhere in the world. You, if you ain't take no notes, there's nowhere in the world you're going to just be able to, like, you repeat the same patterns. So anybody that's serious about what I was just talking about, then, hey, praise God. Well, um, I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. I love you guys. I'll give you an opportunity um, to sow seeds, uh, bring your tithes, bring your offerings, uh, whatever the Lord will have you to do. Let me read the scripture before we go, though. Boy, turn here before we go. Turn here before we go. 
Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. through. Let's read our famous scriptures. Now, I'm always leery about when I first take the first sip out of the Fiji bottle and when I take the first sip from my cup. It's like a spark that hits, like a spark. Like it sparks when you drink it. I don't know if y'all have experienced that before you drink a bottle of water, especially like Fiji. And when I drink this coffee, it's like a little spark. So I gotta try to. I don't know what that's what's that about. Yeah, like it a spark on my teeth or something like that. But anyway, Colossians chapter three, one through one through four. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. If you are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life? Who is our life shall appear. Then shall you also appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. Christ our life. Christ our life. I have my tithes for Sunday. I will bring them past. Okay, absolutely. Glory to God. This is awesome. Word has helped me today, sir. Amen. Christ our life. So, we give you praise, Father. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. So, we're going to put all the links on the screen. We're going to put the links on the screen, and we're going to pray with the offering for those who will be sowing seeds this morning. And, uh, yeah, we're going to pray. I want to thank everybody for joining us this morning on Facebook and on and on YouTube, thank you guys for joining us. Christ, our life is powerful. <laughs> I still ain't need to get into my notion. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll be able to get into it tomorrow. Christ, our life. Christ, our life. Um, so the links are in the description right here. Adrian Simpkins have all the different links up for you all, and then um, uh, Joy put up. Some of the giving links on YouTube, uh, text to give, and different things. If you're on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Do that for me. All the people on YouTube. Uh, and then also, too, if you can like it, like it as well. I greatly appreciate that. Same thing, all my Facebook people. All right, let's pray. Definitely watching the, the, the replay. Okay, awesome. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this fellowship. Thank you for speaking through me, Holy Spirit, into your people's lives. Thank you for charging them. Thank you for encouraging them. Thank you for correcting them. And thank you for helping them realign their focus. I pray, Father, that they will take these things seriously, that they will learn to change their patterns, their way of thinking, their philosophies, and that they would be more prone to do what pleases you versus living for self. And, and I pray a multiplication of every seed that's sown today. In Jesus' name, amen. We well, love you guys. Thank you for joining. Um, Pastor Nidra will be on at 1 o'clock. And then also, our last day is tomorrow, 10 a.m., 5 a.m. prayer, 10 a.m. discipleship, and then uh, 1 p.m. with Pastor Nidra, and then 7.30 prayer. And don't forget, um, Friday morning, we're going to be taking communion. Friday morning, we're going to be taking communion. So make sure 5 a.m. everybody comes and receive the blessing of taking communion. Love you all. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, God bless you. Bye-bye.